Today's movie is Hatchet. Uh, this is uh, written and directed by Adam Green. Uh, kind of a response to the, the current state of horror at the time, and, and still uh, kind of the state of horror where it is. Where, you know, I, I think anyone could argue fairly enough that horror is kind of in trouble, sort of. Um, it's not as, as distinct of a genre as maybe it used to be, so uh, this was kind of uh, a response to bring bring it back to a certain kind of uh, roots, namely 80s. Like, this is very much uh, an, an 80s uh, style and inspired type of, of movie. Um, but that's something that, you know, like, modern horror has fallen into a pitfall itself. Like, uh, uh, having to do these throwbacks, like, hey, let's make a movie that's exactly like something in the 80s, which is, is fun and cool, uh, but at the same time, not entirely progressive uh, for horror. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it's, you know, counterproductive, um, but, I mean, it, it doesn't, uh, you know, plant a flag in, in horror itself. Though I'd say Hatchet definitely... Uh, has made its mark in its own ways um, as a, a very good uh, throwback horror movie, which which is very enjoyable. This is a very enjoyable movie, uh, very fun with a lot of practical effects. Only practical effects, as, as far as I know, unless there's some you know sneaky digital shots uh, put in uh, that that uh, uh, are pretty seamless. But I, I would say this is uh, mainly done with practical effects. Um, this movie. Um, so yeah, I mean. It's hard to say where horror stands. Like, you have the the paranormal movie after paranormal movie after paranormal movie, after found footage movie. Um, the deconstruction of the horror movie as a genre, all within itself, kind of picking apart uh, the conventions of the genre to try to give us something original. Uh, there is nothing new under the sun. Um, so, I mean, aside from all the remakes, you know, the the Americanizations of Japanese films. Uh, you know, horror is, is kind of a jumble uh, now, so we can't really look at a certain period and say this is what horror is. But at the same time, you have so much uh, to choose from, including the throwback. Uh, so I, I would say that's kind of where horror stands. It's a, a melting pot of ideas, you know, people scrambling to... Uh, to 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 make the genre exciting again, to to make it, uh, you know, something that uh, is is still alive and thriving. Which, you know, I I think, though maybe horror wasn't what it used to be. I think it's it's still, uh, there's still hope <laughs> for for the modern horror movie because there's plenty of great modern horror movies that use their gimmicks that throw back a little bit. Um, so I think that's kind of where it stands, um, where it's it's being deconstructed um, in, in this day and age, which is kind of cool. And this is a cool movie. This is a fun movie. Um, it takes place in Louisiana during um, Mardi Gras, uh, of course, uh, starring um, uh, Joel David uh, Moore, uh, who... Um, uh, we've seen him in uh, Grandma's Boy. We've seen him in uh, Avatar. Uh, so he's a, he's a well-known actor. Um, he's, you know, kind of the guy down on his luck. His girlfriend just broke up with him. His, his buddy, uh, Dion Richmond, who's great in the movie, the best friend character. Very, very funny. Um, you know, takes him out to, to Mardi Gras. Um, you know, have a good time. See some boobs, drink some beer, that kind of stuff. But uh, he's not having any of that. And he's like, hey, you know, uh, our other friends went on this... Uh, a uh, boat tour of you know the haunted swamp area. So so let's go there. Let's let's check that out. That could be cool. So that's the movie basically. And of course, as as required uh, in, in these types of movies, uh, things go terribly wrong. Uh, there are deep dark secrets um, within the tour group, and uh, a horrible terror awaits them in the woods, in the swamp, uh, in in this uh, uh, dark. Uh, Louisiana night. <laughs> so that's, you know, basically it. So uh, it's an interesting uh, location uh, for the movie. It's sp more specifically New Orleans. Um, and, you know, I, I think they, they do a good job of making it more of a throwback kind of movie. Like they have, it's it's a simple movie with like, you know, the, the campfire tale of this Victor Crowley uh, character. A deformed kid growing up, uh, he was supposedly killed uh, with a hatchet to the face, but he uh, stalks these woods at night, uh, killing anyone who crosses his path and, and uh, desecrates the sacred grounds of his of his woods his home so that's basically it um so i, I think they they do pretty well and and uh 
you know, there's a lot of winks and nudges uh, to the horror genre. You have a cameo at the very beginning uh, by Robert Englund uh, playing the uh, Gator Fisher. This it's pretty cool uh, to see him in this movie. Um, Tony Todd uh, plays a, a, a cameo in it as well. He's very funny. Um, and uh, Victor Crowley himself, actually in two roles, Victor Crowley and in the flashback, uh, Victor Crowley's father, uh, none other than Jason Voorhees, Kane Hodder, uh, who's very good in this role. So, well, uh, with Jason, uh, he, 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 you know, in, in the grander scheme of things, he shares that role with a great many actors. I would say the, the Victor Crowley character in, in Hatchet is something that's uniquely his own. So he's all in the big makeup and the deformed kind of elephant man <laughs> makeup, as, as uh, the Dion Richmond character notes. Uh, just running around growling and uh, g killing the shit out of people. That's basically one by one. Everybody dies, and, and that's that's the movie, basically. Um, and it's, it's a, a gruesome pleasure to watch. It really is. Like, the effects are really good, you know. Uh, you know, he'll uh, twist a head uh, 360 degrees and snap it open, or like grab the one woman by uh, the the top and bottom jaw, split her head open, uh, rip another girl's jaw off. Uh, just oh, gruesome, gruesome stuff. But it's all practical effects that are really cool. And like you see, like the blood spurting out, and you're like, okay, this is really some. Someone has like a tube in there that's spraying all this shit all over the actors, making their lives miserable. I'm sure. Um, and it's not digital stuff. It is real. It's there. And and there is, you know, just something that, you know, you take a horror fan kind of pleasure in, in seeing, I would say. So I think it gets the job done uh, in, in what it sets out to do. It's a very good movie, though. I mean, it's not perfect. Um, I think, you know, some of the humor falls flat. But for the most part, I think the dialogue is pretty lively and interesting. And, and there are a lot of funny moments. Uh, good characters... Uh, and uh, the Victor Crowley, it's a pretty menacing uh, presence in this movie. So I think they they do a pretty good job uh, with uh, making this movie and, and making it, you know, one of those 80s throwbacks. So I think it's very well done. Um, maybe my only complaint is with the ending, you know, which which is good, but you kind of feel like, you know, it stops short in the middle of the scene, which I know was kind of the intention. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I know that I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, is there something wrong with my DVD player? Did this skip? to the very end what the fuck is going on no that's kind of what they intended to do it would have been nice to have just a little bit more at the end to to give it some kind of sense of finality or, or at least kind of structure that what their intended ending would be like stopping short in the middle of this you know terrifying scene if they would have done it a little bit better it's it's hard to put my finger on why exactly the ending doesn't quite work as well as they intended it to um but that'd probably be my major gripe uh other than that, uh, good characters in this movie. Again, good, you know, bloody gruesome kills, which are, which are always fun to see. And uh, I, I think, you know, Adam Green, he, he sets out what, what he intended to do. And I think he's a very talented writer and director. Um, of course, my favorite movie from him had to be uh, uh, Frozen, uh, which was an exceptional film. Um, so he's definitely got a lot of talent. And, and he, he does have, you know, a, a, a very... Um, you know, true style uh, to his work that he, he's able to define himself with. So uh, this is uh, an example of his talent right here and an example of, you know, uh, horror being uh, whatever it needs to be, I guess, um, in this uh, modern climate of, of horror being in a little bit of, of trouble. So I think this is one of the contributions uh, to the, the genre still, still, still uh, thriving. Um, I actually haven't seen the sequels uh, to Hatchet. I've heard kind of mixed things about these. I know this has its its following. This has uh, its its place uh, in in modern horror, and and I would say you know most people uh, like it quite a bit. Um, so yeah, if, if if the sequels are worth telling me, please comment below. I'm, I'm, I'll be very interested. I I I, I uh, you know again heard kind of mixed things about them, so wasn't entirely sure to check uh, Hatchet two and three out. But uh, as it stands, Hatchet one, very entertaining film, lots of great gruesome effects, and a fun time uh, watching a horror movie. So kind of brings the fun back to horror. Uh, so that'll be my review. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, stay tuned for more. Thirty one days of horrors uh, horror. <laughs> Uh, reviews this month.